All right, what's going on in advanced math day? Here we go. We've got lesson 5.2.3, recursive sequences. All right, so first one, we're going to consider the sequence negative 8, negative 2, 4, and 10. So negative 8, we would say, is the first term, or t of 1. And negative 2 would be the second term, third term, fourth term. So we've got four terms in the sequence here. And we usually want to look for a pattern here. I think we can all agree that it looks like it's adding 6 each time. So our common difference there is 6. Now, what are two ways that we could calculate the 10th term? So we're on the fourth term. We want to go all the way over here to the 10th term. How could we get there? So there's really two processes to get there. We could just keep on adding 6 until we get to the 10th term. So we could add six to get the fifth term, add six more to get six, add six more to get the seventh, then the eighth, then the ninth, and then finally the 10th. So we could just add six several times until we get to the 10th term. So we can keep adding six till we, uh, to the previous term. till we make it to the 10th term. Okay, that process, when you just keep on adding to get to the next one, is called the recursive process. So that's finding something recursively. The other way that we do it or we've kind of been playing around with this, is by coming up with some kind of equation to get to that term. So in this one, we could say, uh, we could come up with an equation using T of N equals the common difference times the term number plus the zeroth term. So basically, it's y equals mx plus b. That process is called the explicit. So we would come up with an equation, and then we'd say, OK, I want the 10th term. So we plug in 10 into n, and then go from there. So two different ways to do it, explicit and recursive. So the first thing we want to do is write an explicit equation. OK, so. If I know that my common difference is 6, because I'm adding 6 each time, and t of 0, since I'm adding 6 this way, the 0th term would mean I would subtract 6, because I need to go backwards to get to the 0th term. So negative 8 minus 6 would be negative 14. So I would say that the nth term, so t of n, would be equal to 6 times the term number n minus 14. And then all we would have to do to get to the 10th term is plug into 10 here, and we get 60 minus 14, which would be like 46. And we can double check that our equation works by like plugging in 4 here. We get 24 minus 14. That's 10. Okay, it's working. Plug in 3. We'd get 18 minus 14, which is 4. Okay, it's definitely working. The recursive process is a little bit different, and it uses the notation of t of n plus 1. Remember, t of n was the nth term. t of n plus 1 is the next term. So remember, we're always using the previous term to find the next term. So the recursive equation would say something like t of n plus 1. So the next term, because remember when we do it recursively, we're just adding to get to the next term each time. So the next term would be equal to 
the previous term, t of n, plus 6. Because if I want to get to the next term, I'd take the term right before it, the nth term, and add 6. So if I'm on the fourth term, and I know the fourth term is 10, this would be t of 4. And then that would mean that this one would be t of 4 plus 1, t of 5, the fifth term. And so we would just add 6 to the fourth term. So we know the fourth term is 10, so 10 plus 6, the fifth term would be 16. And then when we wanted to find the sixth term, we do t of 5, or t of 6 would equal t of 5 plus 6. So we're just adding the next term each time. All right, so next one. So Alejandro's classmates gave him the recursive equation. So they gave him this, and they never told him what the actual sequence was. But they're like, hey, if we give you the equation, you should be able to replicate the sequence for us. So they give him the recursive equation. And he's like, okay, here's my answer. The first term zero, the next one six, because I'm adding six each time. The next one's 12, because I'm adding six each time. Then 18, then 24. They're like, hey, hey, wait, Alejandro, that's not correct. Uh, it started at negative eight and not zero. You started at zero. You did add six each time, but you didn't come up with the sequence that we came up with. So why did he come up with a different sequence than they did? Well, because they left some information out. If he is trying to replicate, replicate their sequence, they were unfair to him. They have to tell him where he started. So he had no idea where they started. So he just had to kind of guess, well, maybe they started at zero. I don't know. So, you know, they didn't give him enough information. So he did that because he didn't know where the sequence started. And in order to replicate the sequence, you have to know where it started when you're doing it recursively. Now, when you're doing it explicitly, Okay, we can find any term we want because we have an equation. So if I want the first term, I just plug in one here, and I get six minus fourteen, which is negative, which is negative eight. So I could find the first term. But if we are given a recursive sequence, that's just telling you how to get to the next one. You can't get to any term. You always have to know the term before it before you get to that next term. So when we're doing the uh, recursive formulas, we have to mention what the first term is. So he needed to have the original sequence. He needed t of 1, the first term. In this case, t of 1 is negative 8. So when we're doing a recursive process, that's the first thing you're going to tell people. Okay, t of 1 is negative 8. And then you tell them what the process is to get to the next term. So the next term would be the previous term plus 6. Now he could replicate it because he knows to start at 8 and then add 6 to get to the next one, negative 2, then add 6 to get to the next one. So when you do a recursive equation, you write down the equation, but you also have to give people a starting point. Otherwise, they can't replicate the sequence that you have. All right, so Avery is trying to trick her classmates. And so she comes up with a really hard recursive equation for them to do it. Now, she's nice. She does give them the starting term. But she decides, hey, I'm going to make this hard. I'm going to make them really work for it. Okay, we want to know what are the first four terms of the sequence. Well, thank you, Avery. You gave us the first term. We know where to start. So three would be our first one. So I need three more terms. Let's look at the equation. T of n plus one. What is that? That's the next term. T of n. What's that? That's the previous term. What are we doing to it? We're squaring it. 
and then subtracting 1. So what we should do to find the second term, so if I want t of 2, what I need to do is take t of 1, the previous term, not 11, why did I do that? I don't know. And then square it and then subtract 1. So if I want the second term, which is what I'm looking for now, I take the first term, square it, and then subtract 1. So what's the first term? It's 3. So I'm going to do 3 squared, 9, and then subtract 1, 8. How do I get to the next term? Well, to get to the next term, I take the previous term, 8, square it, 64, subtract 1, 63. How do I get to the fourth term? I'm going to need a calculator at this point. I'm supposed to take the previous term, 63, square it, so 63 times 63, 3,969, and then subtract 1, so 3,968. And then it goes on forever from there. All right, is her sequence arithmetic, geometric, or some other type? All right, are we adding or subtracting the same amount? Nope, so it's not arithmetic. Are we multiplying or dividing by the same amount? Well, we can double check that real quick. We would do 8 divided by 3, and it gives us 2.6 repeating. Okay, so if it's geometric, 63 divided by 8 should give us the same number. So 63 divided by 8, mm, nope, it's not multiplying by the same amount each time. So it's not geometric, so it's some other type of sequence. And we know it's another type because it's squaring. Remember, if it were geometric, we would be multiplying each time. So this is some other type. And by the way, it's quadratic. This is a U shape. Anyways, we've got a quadratic uh, sequence there, but you don't have to know that. You just have to know that it's some other type. What does the recursive require you to do to find the 10th term? Well, what it requires us to do is to keep on finding all the terms before 10. So I'm up to the fourth term. I would have to keep on doing this process for the fifth term, the sixth term, the seventh term, the eighth term, the ninth term, and then to the tenth term. So in order for this to work, I have to keep on doing this process over and over again, one term at a time. So you have to find all the terms before the tenth term. Because to find the tenth term, we would have to square the ninth term and subtract one. To find the ninth term, we'd have to square the eighth term and subtract one. So the recursive process is kind of the process that makes the most sense for getting to the next term. It makes the most sense as far as what's happening to get to the next one. But for finding terms that aren't in a row, the recursive process isn't the greatest for that. You know, the explicit equations, they will find any term we want. We can jump straight to whatever term just by plugging in the term number. Whereas the recursive process is only used to find the next term in the sequence. All right, so Avery gave them that tricky recursive sequence, and Colin's like, okay, I'm going to get you back, Avery. I'm going to give you a really hard one, too. Now, here's what he did. This is kind of smart. He's like, okay, I'm going to give you a really simple one, but I'm not going to give you the first term. I'm going to give you the second term in the sequence. Hmm. Well played. Well played. So in this one, to write the recursive equation for the sequence, I have 
t of n plus 1 equals t of n minus 2. Okay, I'm subtracting 2. So this is the first part of the recursive, but remember we need a, a t of 1 in order for this to work. And we don't have t of 1, we have t of 2. So what we have here is the second term in the sequence. Sorry, that's a negative 2. So we're missing the first term in the sequence. Now, since this is the second term in the sequence, I know to go forward and to find the third term, I would take the previous term, which is negative 2, and subtract 2. So this would be negative 4 for the third term. And to find the fourth term in the sequence, I would just take the previous term of negative 4 and subtract 2, and I get negative 6. So I'm subtracting 2 going this way, which means I need to add 2 to go this way. So that means that my first term would be 0. So 0 is my first term, so now I can write the recursive equation. The recursive equation would be t of 1, because you have to tell people where to start if they, you want them to reproduce what it is here. t of 1 equals 0, and then you can tell them how to get to the next term. t of n plus 1 equals t of n minus 2. All right, so that's the recursive, where you have to tell them where to start and how to get to the next one. The explicit says, how do we get to any term? And remember, in the explicit, we say the nth term, so any term that I want to get to, is equal to the common difference times the term number plus the zeroth term, the term that doesn't exist. All right, so we need to find the common difference. Well, we have it. They gave us the common difference right there. It's negative 2. So we've got the term, the nth term, any term in the sequence, is equal to negative 2 times the term number. And now we need to find the zeroth term. We know the first term is 0, and we know we're subtracting 2 going this way, so we're adding 2 going the other way. So the zeroth term would be 2, because I'm going to add 2 to 0 to go backwards, because going forwards, I subtract 2. So the zeroth term is 2. 2. And now we can double check to see if it works. So if I plug in 1 here, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Plug in 2 here, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Plug in 3 here, negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Yes, it works. So that would be our explicit equation, which is basically y equals mx plus b. But anyways, here we go. All right, Fibonacci sequence can be written recursively I remember Fibonacci, that was used a couple lessons ago. That's where we use the previous two terms. Now let's see what this one looks like. So in Fibonacci, you need the first two terms because that's how you find the next terms. So t of 1 is 1, t of 2 is 1. The next term is equal to the previous term plus the term before the previous term. That's what n, t of n minus 1 means. So this is the next term. This is the previous term. And this is the term before the previous. The previous previous? I don't know what you would call that. Term before the previous. So, here we go. Write the first 10 terms of Fibonacci sequence. Well, they told us our first term is 1. They told us our second term is 1. Our third term. So, if I want the third term, I would take the second term plus the first term. Because if it's the third term, then this must be a 2, and this must be 2 minus 1, which is 1. So, second term, first term. So I would do 1 plus 1 is 2. There's my third term. To find my fourth term, n plus 1, I would take my third term and add my second term to it. Because if this is 3, then this is 3 minus 1, 2. So third term, second term. Third term is 2. Second term is 1. Two, 1 plus 2 is 3. 
The next term in the sequence would be 2 plus 3, 5. Next term in the sequence would be 3 plus 5, 8. Next term in the sequence would be 5 plus 8, 13. Next term would be 8 plus 13, 21. Next term would be 13 plus 21, which is 34. How many do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. One more. 21 plus 34 would be 55. And it goes on forever. There's the first 10 terms of Fibonacci sequence. Is this sequence arithmetic, geometric, or other? Well, we are adding, but it's not arithmetic because we're, add, we're not adding the same amount each time. We're not multiplying, so this is other. This is not arithmetic, and it's not geometric. What would you have to do to find the 100th term of the sequence? Well, we'd have to find every term through the 99th, which would be a pain in the butt. So we would have to find every term before the hundredth term. And that's how the recursive process works. You can't just jump to whatever term you want to. So that's usually why we stick with the explicit process, because then we can jump to whatever term we want. The recursive process does explain what's happening a little bit better. And we can really see how to get to the next term. But the explicit one is kind of a quicker way to get to the final term. That's all I've got for you today. Recursive sequences, done. This is our last week before finals week, so good on you for sticking around. All right, math hard. See you later. Bye-bye.